In this video, we will see how we can connect to a Google Cloud SQL database from a cloud function written in Python. We are going to start by creating the Cloud SQL instance, connect to it from our local machine and enter some data, then uh, work on the function that can read this data. The source code and the commands we use will be linked in the video description below. And if you want to support the channel, please consider subscribing. It makes a big difference. Thank you. We will open the Google Cloud Console, so consolecloudgoogle.com and uh, create a new project in here. So click on the drop down, the new project. Uh, the name is not important. It will generate this project ID, inspired Victor, which looks good. We click on create. Okay, so the project is created now. Um, it's this one right here. And now in the search bar, we will type in Cloud SQL to open um, Cloud SQL uh, product. And uh, choose Create Instance. Uh, we will use MySQL for this project. Yeah, we need to enable this API first. Enabling the API took uh, a couple of minutes on my machine and I skipped ahead. So after that operation finished, we landed on this page where we can configure our uh, a Cloud SQL instance. So we can give it a name in here. It was auto -pop populated with the previous name I used. Um, let's call it test my SQL for instance ID. Then for the password, uh, we need to generate a new password and then uh, we need to save it, uh, save it in a text file somewhere. I will save it off screen. We will use it later. Okay, and uh, then we have MySQL version, configuration in which to start, then the region that we want it deployed. I'm uh, using US West 4 because it's my local data center. And uh, because we're just doing a test, single zone is fine. And more importantly here in customize your instance, well, first of all, we can configure the hardware that our uh, database is running on. And uh, by default, actually, um, the machine type that Google Cloud chooses by default is this one with four CPUs and 26 gigabytes. And the problem is that it's pretty expensive. Previously, they used to have this calculator in this area so you would know how much it costs you per month. But if we search for Cloud SQL pr uh, prices, um, so in here in CPU and memory pricing, we see that one virtual CPU is uh, $32 per month. So this one has four CPUs um, so it will be $130 just the CPUs and also um, 26 gigabytes of memory, which will, uh, is that $1,000? I don't know. It's, it's very expensive. So we actually need to choose here the, the shared core, um, the shared core instance, which is the cheapest one. So this one will be so one CPU and uh, 0.6 gigabytes, uh, this will end up being something like $32 plus $3. It's probably around $40 if you run it for, for an entire month. So yeah, Cloud SQL instances, they're not the cheapest uh, product in Google Cloud. Here in storage, we can, uh, we can select the smallest one again let's see for storage yeah storage is not that expensive as 10 cents per gigabytes of ssd like that connections yeah we can keep public ip enabled for now so yeah they can do backups automatically and save them in uh, cloud gcs and cloud storage uh, so yeah they are they have a bunch of um uh, DBA operations that come out of the box, which is pretty nice. And now uh, we can just, everything looks good. So we can uh, actually, let me make sure again what, 
yeah, I did shared core. So now we can create the instance and it says instance is being created. And this operation actually will, um, will take quite a, quite a while. So if we look here, it says instance is being updated. In some cases, it took like 10 or 20 minutes to initialize this. So just uh, hang tight, uh, make yourself a cup of coffee and uh, we'll, uh, we'll, I'll be back when the operation finishes. Now that the Cloud SQL instance is created, we can see this uh, green check mark saying runnable in here. We will continue by creating a database on this instance. So we go to databases. And in here we uh, do create database. Let's call this uh, database products. In here and uh, next we will uh, connect to this database uh, from our uh, local machine and uh, for this we will use uh, a cloud SQL proxy tool so we search for cloud SQL proxy and we find this page about cloud SQL proxy admin so what this one does is it creates a tunnel from our machine to uh, Cloud SQL and Google Cloud. And this tunnel can be either through, uh, through a port on our local host or through uh, a Unix socket. And we will use the Unix socket method. So in, in here, if we scroll down to download and install the Cloud SQL Alt Proxy, we have this command that we need to run in our terminal. So I open this terminal window in a directory that is empty. So we just copy this one from here. Make sure you select your uh, operating system. So I'm on Mac 64 bit. And we see the file and we need to give it executive uh, permissions like that. So now we have this tool that we can run Cloud SQL Proxy. But um, yeah, we, we need to provide the instance that we are tunneling into and then the method that we are tunneling with. So we need to create a directory in here called Cloud SQL. It can be any name, but it is good if we re if we name it Cloud SQL uh, because the the it will be easier to adapt the code from localhost to a cloud function environment. So now we go to, um, we, we select our uh, connection name from, from the instance description. So we copy this uh, instance name in here. So now we run the tool. We just, we just downloaded cloud SQL proxy. The flags are instances equal this um, connection name we just copied. And then if we specify dash directory and then the new directory we just uh, we just created, this will create a Unix socket. If we open a new terminal, so I'm going to navigate to the same directory. In here, and if we look inside the Cloud SQL directory we just created, we see that there is a file uh, with uh, the same name as our connection. And um, this looks like a normal file, but it's actually the socket that we can use to connect to the database using the MySQL client. So we're going to do that right now. Uh, we run the MySQL client with username root. We're gonna use dash p and it will prompt us to enter the password and then the socket name and this one will be Cloud SQL, and then the, um, the file that was just created. So now it prompts us to enter our password, and uh, this is the password that we saved from when we created the instance in Google Cloud. So I pasted it from off screen in here, and we see already that Cloud SQL proxy identified a new connection, and uh, now we have the SQL prompt on the right terminal. And if we do show databases, we see that we have our products database. 
and we can connect to it, connect to product. It prompts us for the password again. So I, I will enter it. Hold on. Again. Products, yeah. All right, so third time lucky. And if we do a show tables, we see that we don't have any tables right now. Now we will uh, create a table and introduce some rows in uh, this database. So uh, I have this uh, Visual Studio Code instance op open in our uh, current directory. We can see the Cloud SQL proxy in here. So I'm going to create a new file called init.sql and um, just to write out the commands that we're going to use. So we're going to do a create table. Let's say we will make this table for produce and there will be two columns product name of um, 255 characters and the price which is a decimal of uh, six six total digits and two after the decimal point semicolon and uh, let's try this command and see if uh, it creates the table Okay, very good. Now if we do a show tables, we, we see our table that was created. And um, now we can insert some rows. So we'll do insert into produce values. So we'll do multiple rows. Let's say Apple 1.85 uh, price, then avocado. $1.15, let's do celery, uh, 283, let's say carrots, 80 cents, and banana, 60 cent. Banana, 60 cents. So we add semicolon and let's uh, run this um, command in the SQL client. So yeah, we see that it was successful. And if we do a select star from uh, produce, we will see the lines we just entered. Now we can start working on a Python code that can connect to the database. There are multiple uh, Python packages that you can use for connecting to databases. SQL Alchemy is a very good one, very powerful ORM. But for this video, I would like to use a more basic MySQL client, and that is uh, Python MySQL. So if we search for PY MySQL, uh, we will see this link from Python package index for this package. And it tells us how to install it with pip and also a quick start example that we will uh, adapt. So we, we will open our Visual Studio Code instance. And uh, first of all, we will create a requirements file. Requirements txt. And uh, in here, we just have this uh, new package that we are using, PYMySQL. We save it and uh, we need to, we will create a new virtual environment. So we'll do a new terminal in here and we will do Python 3. No, actually it's, uh, yeah, Py Python 3 module V, E, and V. And we create a new environment called my environment, my underscore environment. And now we run um, from my environment, binary pip. We install the requirements file with uh, install dash r and then uh, requirements.txt. So now we can write the main Python file, uh, main.py. We'll add the default check if name equals equals main. And uh, we're gonna start from the uh, example uh, of, of the library and uh, we're gonna adapt it. So this one, first we create the connection. We need to indent it one more level and we need to import the library PyMySQL. 
So this method is, is using a local host and port to connect to the database, but in our case, we need to use Unix socket. And uh, we will provide the relative path of um, this socket right here. So we, we right click on it and uh, we copy the relative path like that. Our user is root, the password is, uh, I'm, I'm pasting it from off screen, is the password we generated when we create the Cloud SQL instance. The database is uh, products and uh, yeah, we can use the dictionary cursor. So in here, there are two examples. One is for inserting rows in, in the database and the second one is for selecting rows. And uh, we will do this uh, second one from here. So we're gonna add the with connection part. So with connection, and then with the connection cursor as cursor, and uh, we will change the query, the SQL query. In here, we'll simply going to do select star from uh, produce like that. I think we need semicolon in there. And uh, we will do fetch all instead of fetch one and print result. Let's see what problem is here. Oh yeah, we, we don't, we are not indented correctly. It needs one, uh, one more um, level of indentation. And uh, now we can try it out. Let's make sure uh, in here in the Python interpreter that it, it is using the virtual environment, my ENV, and it does. If it's not, you need to click on it and select the My Environment. So now if we run this file, we will see that uh, it actually printed the, the rows in our database. So we have product name. And then for um, price, it returns these objects from the library. They are not uh, float numbers, but this wrapper decimal and uh, we need to convert out of it into a normal number. So in here, we are going to do um, a map on this uh, results. So it will be, let's say, row for row in result. Okay, and now instead of row, we will create a new dictionary. So name will be a row of uh, product name. And uh, the second uh, entry in our dictionary will be price. And we will convert um, row of price. We will convert it to float. Like that. And um, yeah, now if we run it again, we will see that it is now a proper dictionary. The MySQL library also allows for um, parameters inside queries. So let's say we have a threshold for the maximum price of the products we want to return, let's say 1.5. So the way we do it is we add the clause where price is um, smaller than or equal to, and then uh, instead of mock max price, we, we escape it with uh, percentage S. And then we need to add all the parameters inside of a tuple as the second argument in cursor dire execute. So in here, max price, and we add the comma to make it a tuple. And uh, the library will make sure we are not causing SQL injection. And um, obviously, the um, this is the wrong way to do it. Like, let's say we use string interpolation in here and we just add max price in here, this will open ourselves up to SQL injection. In order to prevent it, we need to use this, uh, we need to use the interpolation method from uh, cursor.execute. The method will make sure we don't have um, SQL injection, so percentage S in here, and then max price in the tuple in the second argument. So if we rerun it now, we will see that we only get the products that costs uh, less than or equal to 1.5.
Now we'll uh, reorganize a bit uh, this code to make it easier for um, converting it into a function. So all, um, all, all this function, so we will create a new function, let's say get products with a max price argument and um, move all this code from here into this new function. And instead of printing the results here, we will return we will return them as a dictionary, let's say results, and then result. And we can try it out in um, main, oh, and also max price, we will use it from the argument instead of the, instead of hard coding in there. And now we can print the get products, let's say of uh, one, to make sure it still works correctly. And uh, yeah, we got the products that cost costed most one. Also, we need to change the path of the Unix socket for um, the database connection. The, um, in, in the Cloud Functions environment, the sockets are in the root path in the same in the directory called uh, Cloud SQL. And also, we will move the database password to an environment variable. So OS environment and the environment variable will be DB password. This will make the code more, more configurable. So we remove it from here and we also need to import OS. And uh, now we can actually create the function. So we'll go to our uh, uh, Google Cloud um, web page, web UI. And in here we search for cloud functions. And we create a new function in here. We need to enable all these APIs. We provide a name to our function. Let's call it get product. And a region where it will run. I'm using my usual region of West 4. Of course, it, it helps if the function and the database are in um, nearby regions. You will have lower latency between the two. The trigger will be HTTP. And uh, in, in here in runtime, we see right here that the function will use this app engine default service account. And uh, before we deploy the function, we actually need to give this uh, service account permissions to access uh, Cloud SQL databases. So for this, we I open a new tab with uh, Google Cloud Console and we will search IAM, Identity Access Management and Admin. And in here, we will look for the App Engine Default Service Account. So we need to click that, this pencil and add a role of um, Cloud SQL Client. We save uh, the changes. And now we get back to creating our function. So we need to add uh, the environment variable with the DB password that we just added and uh, paste here the password to our database like that. Okay, this all looks good. So for runtime, we need to choose Python and uh, we adapt this code a little bit. So let's say that we, we we need to transfer the requirements first. So from here, the only requirement, the Python MySQL library. And um, now the, the function we just wrote, this one from here. and we will paste everything on top of this uh, hello world. So we have the DB password, everything, and uh, we will, um, so in here we will return get products. And for the max price, we will get it from request JSON. And let's say if it's not present, we will, we will use the dictionary.get method that allows us to provide a default. So max price. And if we don't provide it, it we will use 1.5. We don't need the um, 
lines below that. The entry point right here is hello world function, hello world. So it, everything looks good. We can try to deploy it. When the status of our cloud function is active and we see this green check mark, we are ready to test it. So if we go to the testing tab in here and we click on test the function, we will see that we get this uh, HTTP 500 internal server error. And if we go to logs, we can see exactly what is causing this error. So in here, we will see a bunch of error logs. And this one says uh, Cloud SQL connection failed. Please see this page to make sure we follow all the steps. And um, actually, there's a better error right here. It says Cloud SQL admin API has not been used in this project before or it is disabled. Enable it by visiting this page. So we can visit this page and, and then retry. So in here, I'll, um, I'll open a new tab. And it says Cloud SQL Admin API, we enable it. We need to create credentials for using this API. So we'll click on Create Credentials. That is good. Um, application data, are, are you planning to use? Uh, yes. Okay. After we enable the API, we will need to wait for a, a few minutes, maybe like five, 10 minutes for the, for these changes to propagate in the system. But once we waited uh, for this amount of time, then we can go back to our function and uh, retest it. And we will see now that we get products that cost at most the 1.5. And if we want to adjust the max price, we change the argument, let's say, to 1. So this one should uh, remove the avocados from the results. And uh, we will see it worked as expected. As we discussed earlier in the video, the Cloud SQL instances are pretty expensive. So if you don't need it at the moment, make sure you stop it delete the Cloud SQL instance, or you can delete the entire project. This is all the material we had for this video. The source code and the commands we used will be linked in the video description below. And if you want to continue watching more cloud videos, there should be more showing up on the screen. Thank you.